Warning, the following may contain adult themes, concepts, and languages. Be aware that there is a separation between the character and the player, even when the pronoun I is used. So, where we last left off... Yeah, we... Well, yeah, you guys just... Um, talk to the person you ref uh, Drake refers to as his auntie. Her actual name was Lasana, or is still Lasana. Um, she basically gave you a couple of books on petrification, which we're all actively reading, or at least going uh, through. I want to roll uh, golf. Roll one d four. And Yay! <laughs> what is it? It's a one, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a one. Um, while you are reading, she is doing whatever with the chest. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not her chest, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> the chest, not her. Yeah, okay. And it explodes and she dies, and I'm very sad. And Rat disconnected. <laughs> he said, I, I've had enough of this, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> he's still in Mumble, but the fact that he's not talking means he probably disconnected. Well, he's back on the screen. Oh. He must have accidentally clicked exit. It's like, I want to exit this map. Oh no. No, we just. Oh, there he comes. That was without reason. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Please stand kind by. Kind of rude. Kind of rude. Anyway. So, um, the books are all about magical pet um, turning into stone. Petrification. Mm -hmm. um, they all talk about different types of magics that can cause it, why you would want to cause it, and if you have been able to cause it, how can you stop it? For magic, it tends to be a dispel charm. And the dispel needs to be made to directly counter the magic that has been used. So to counter uh, the the type of magic, you first need to know what it has been used, what incantation has been used, before you can basically use the correct words to counter it. This is for the. This is for magical 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 petrification. Magical petrification. Right. But right. we know that that's not the only type. <clears throat> I can, yeah, I, know, I have a way I can identify which spell was used. Possibly. Um, but the, the, this is where the books that you read all talk about. Mm -hmm. The magical ways of petrifying good people, or creatures, or plants, or whatever. Nothing on creatures that can cause petrification? Nope. Just that they require some kind of magic? Mm, not necessarily. What th this states that magic can do this. It also says that other things can do it and creatures can do it, but it doesn't specify in any way. It just goes in on the magic. Okay. Which, given your auntie's interest, doesn't seem so surprising. Yeah. I'll pro I I I probably want to go to like a. After we figure this out, I want to go to like a bookstore or something. If they have a library, go to that, but otherwise I'll go to a bookstore and look for like a book on creatures that cause, can cause petrification. There is a library. Oh, there is a library? Yeah. So there's a public, like, public books? Yeah, it's a smaller library, um, but they have a decent sized amount of books for people to read. Alright, well we can head there next if it looks like she's making any progress on it, we can wait. Um, the entire, well, you wait for like an hour and every once in a while you can hear some sounds coming from the basement, mm -hmm. like small explosions or something. Mm -hmm. That sounds lovely. But nothing major or nothing comes out of anything like that. Okay. Um, 
Well then, should we? You got well. We've got, and this is time that we've gone through the books. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how far away is the library? Uh, I think relatively this, close, giving knowing my aunt. Yeah, it's in this side of the town. So it's so like it's, it, it's how long of a walk? Of Five minute, ten minute. Sort of, yeah. Okay. Um. I guess does anybody uh want to go with me to the library to look for books on it, or does some does someone like to stay, or? I'll go with you to the library. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay and uh, meditate. I'll go in case you need to read something in Dwarvish. That would be convenient. Uh, so Tyrannius, uh, when the when she's done, you can tell her where we are. And I say, Rita, are you okay staying here? She shrugs, just sits back on the couch, and or she goes to the kitchen and gets something to eat or drink. Okay. Um, I say, uh, okay, so the three of us will go down to the library and look for books on that type of subject. Okay, you go to the library, you're looking for petrification. Creatures that cause, creatures, creatures that cause it, that type of thing. Uh, she basically points to a, 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 like a bookcase, which go about creatures. Okay. And there are a couple of books there, all written in common. Okay. I guess we'll so, just look through those books. Yeah, look through the books. Um, roll a 1d10. Mm. All of you. Ten! Hehe! <laughs> Too bad I didn't get that on my health roll. Ah! <laughs> oh, you're not actually there, so it doesn't count for Tyrannius. Toby, Toby, can we swap? <laughs> of course, that was why I rolled. Mind reading. Yeah. I'm perfectly average. Yeah. <laughs> we literally, we literally rolled almost perfectly average. So, um. Golf, you basically immediately grab one of the books which seem logical for you. Mm -hmm. Tommy does the same but ends up with a book that speaks about <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> In another aisle. He's like, what? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Then he, he looks around and notices he's in the wrong aisle and just puts the book back and quietly walks over. And then he does the 10. <laughs> he does Toby's 10. Picks up the perfect book. Now, um, uh, after that, the three of you just sit around the book that you brought, mm -hmm. you uh, grabbed golf, mm -hmm. and you're just flicking through it, and there are a couple of creatures that actually um, pop up. Okay. One of the creatures is a cockatrice. They can turn things to stone? Apparently they can, oh. according to this book. Yeah, that makes sense. Was that the book on mushrooms? <laughs> no. The it's, book it's, on mushrooms will tell you other things. Uh, uh, the book also talks about basilisk. Um, are there more creatures? Let's see if I can find... Uh, there aren't many, unless you want to count a certain snake-headed lady. Medusa? Oh, yeah, Medusas. Um So we have Medusas, we have Is this in fifth edition? I don't know, but what's it called? It's a Gorgon and I know that they're in the game, but I don't think they can I f or they may actually be able to. Been a while. Uh, G G G G G. Seven one. Yep, they can turn people to stone as well. So the book specifies four creatures: the cockatrice, the basilisk, the medusa. And the Gorgon. 
Okay, so let's think about this. We're definitely going to fight Cockatrices, so we definitely want more information on them. Um, the Gorgon, do we, does it give any kind of hint as to the type of, uh, the type of, uh, like, what kind of a creature it is? Um, what they say about the Gorgon is, um, it's basically a bull, but then uh, the bull itself is covered fully by iron plates, and out of his nose comes some sort of green vapor, which the composition is unknown. Um, creating a Gorgon means getting a bull and basically enchanting it in some sort of ritual to make it a Gorgon. Um, they are known to be ferocious and dangerous creatures and they tend to turn on the people that summoned it. Okay. Which is, yeah, interesting. Does it say how they turn them to stone? Um... It says that the breath of the Gorgon can turn creatures to stone. Okay. Um, the co- but the how about the the uh, we already know a little bit about the cockatrice, but do the co- how do the cock do you know the cockatrices turn to stone? Is that written down? I don't know if you have written it down. I'll look it up. But first, I'll give you this one. It's like the picture of the Gorgon that's inside of the book. Kind of. Creepy. Yeah, the, they usually have different uh, horns. Well, if it's a gorgon, I, I, I the, get the feeling that those are really tough. The cockatrices have a bite which can petrify people. They are, um, as you have uh, heard previously, and as you have known actually. Oh, we just lost you. No, I just shut up. There's a difference. Okay. And then the basilisk. This is the cockatrice. Um, the cockatrice's bite uh, mm-hmm. turns people to stone. Right. Uh, but it's temporary. Not temporary. The basilisk... How temporary is, is the cockatrice's bite, Wrath? Uh, a day. One day. Hmm. Well, people are, um, or whatever it bites, and is petrified for a day. Unless so what we're dealing with is most likely not it. a cockatrice. Okay. The basilisk is a large, fi- um, eight feet lizard of some sort with uh, spikes all over its back. Yeah, perfect. This is the image for the basilisk. Um, it, the gaze of this creature can petrify people. It uses that to hunt its prey. It petrify, petrifies people, starts eating parts of them, and then um, the stone will turn it back into flesh inside of the creature's belly. Ouch. Oh. So, would its stomach acid, or something about its stomach, like, reverse the petrification? Yep. And, um, people who have been bitten, or have, uh, the people who have been turned into stone can be reverted back to their original form. Um, by using the stomach acids in the basilisk's stomach, and um, they have to be processed. Yeah, alchemists, uh, yeah, most alchemists can or potion makers know how to process those the acids um, into an antidote. Does so it give say. any idea how much acid per? Because I'm wondering if that's the case, we might want to take one alive and just try to farm it. <laughs> If we can get it. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily give off that much uh, acid at one time. Right, but if we can take it alive and farm it, then... Um, taking it alive, well, the book doesn't say anything about it, but it might not seem that good an idea. Yeah, 
It's, especially, you say it's, especially because it petrifies with his gaze, and pe so, apart from that, it can bite through stone. Yeah. So it's a relatively powerful creature. Does it say, is it like a crocodile where it has, like, only all its muscles are clamped down and not up? No. It doesn't say, or they're not like that? Uh, it doesn't specify. Okay. But I would, I would think it would work more like a dog spite. Hmm. And finally, the Medusa, of which there's little knowledge because they are rather um, uncommon. And those that exist, well, people just avoid them, so to say. Uh, what is known about the Medusa is that they are long humanoid creatures which petrify anyone who um, looks at them. Uh, the, this book tells about uh, certain stories that they dislike uh, reflective area, or <laughs> that they dislike mirrors, etc. Because that'll um, that m might change them into stone. Uh, that their hair is made out of snakes, poisonous snakes. Mm. And the book itself. Uh, Does the book say that uh, for both the Medusa and the Basilisk, since they're both eye-based, is it the eyes themselves or is it the creature willing it through its eyes? So people, have n people haven't necessarily studied that specifics. Okay. Because it would be rather dangerous to try and tricky to do so. Okay. Um... Anyway. Uh, so what do you it guys... It's also said that Medusas tend to have layers. Oh, okay. L-A-I-R-S. Those type. Yeah. Layers. They're not like onions. No, not like onions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what, what do you guys think we're dealing with then? Well, I'm not there, but I'd say Medusa. What do you guys? What do you? What do you two think of the four? Uh, we did. We haven't heard anything about like missing body parts or anything off of the. Yeah, have we heard anything like missing uh, like the statues? Because we have we have been listening quite a bit to the inform that information. Are they like missing? Uh, are they missing like a body part, like a limb or something like that, or are some they completely people say intact? That they have some people say that they have found. Um, Statues with missing body parts. Other people say that it's a lot of bullcrap and that they've seen uh, statues with all their body parts intact. So either we're dealing with a basilisk and a medusa, or we're dealing with a basilisk who is petrifying more than it needs to eat. Or a medusa who just petrifies and cuts off people's whatevers for fun. That's possible. I kind of want to think we're dealing with... I, I, I'm leaning... I'm thinking basilisk. I think that's the most likely candidate. I don't think it's cockatrice, because the cockatrice... I mean, it could be, but they don't stay petrified. So, I'm pretty right. sure that... That's... Yeah, they're missing people, so... Right. They... Yeah. Does the... But does it say any way of reversing the petrification on the Medusa? Uh, not as far as people know. Outside of the normal magic, I'd assume. Because magic can do anything. Um, um, it says that there has been some success of freeing uh, petrified people from the Medusa stair by a greater restoration. Okay. So, um, here's the real question. If, if these people are in trouble... And, of course, if a uh, limp is lost... Upon unpetrification, the limp is also gone. Right. There's also magic that'll, like, uh, regrow limbs, right? Yeah. Greater restoration, but you'll need it twice then. Okay. Um, so my first thought is... This actually would be a good time for a cart. To, like, cart, like, the statues back to a safer location, but... I think our safest bet is to figure out what's petrifying it. So because it's eye-based, 
I, it, it's it's eye to eye, meaning we have to look in their eyes. So basically, as long as we don't look at their eyes, we're okay, yeah? I'm not going to answer that. Okay. Just so it doesn't enough. stay. It's like something you... That's what you think. Okay. You know? I'm going to assume that it's not just them looking at you. I'm going to assume that it's... I don't, it's like vision, and if we don't look at their eyes, which I would assume in this case would be like not looking directly at them, which would probably put us at a disadvantage to attack, we wouldn't be under its effects. Because, you know, just being able to look at someone... Yeah. Okay. What do you guys think? I think that it's most likely the basilisk, because the only hearings of cockatrice we've heard of is nowhere near here. And it doesn't last too long. So the yeah. only, the only, so it, the, so process of elimination, uh, it can't be a cockatrice because it, they don't last very long. Um, the gorgon, the medusa, and the basilisk all last that long. But if we go on probability, basilisk is the most common, medusa being the least, is what I'm understanding, Wrath? Mm, yeah, gorgon saws. It's more like gorgons and medusa are on the same level. Because most people aren't stupid, or, um, what's the word? They aren't in a bad enough of a spot to create a gorgon. Mm -hmm. There are some cults who would create gorgons, but... Okay, so we're most likely dealing with a basilisk, if not multiple basilisk. Basil would that be basili? <laughs> I think it's basilisks. basilisks. Yeah. Mm. Which is annoying to speak, but... All right. Um, so we know that we, if it is a basilisk, we would we could take a psychic acid. Okay, I guess the next best thing would be to find a, a well-to-do alchemist and ask like how much he thinks he could get, how how much an, like anti petrification he could get with a basilisk, basically stomach acid, and if it would be possible, would be practical possible to. Actually, if we remove its eyes. That would probably make it a lot easier. We can move its eyes without killing it. None of us has medical skill, though. Hmm. Uh, we don't know how many people are petrified either. Do we get a rough number about how many people were petrified? No. Not at all. Okay. Uh, I, I'm. I, I think the best uh, next step is to go look for an alchemist and ask to see if he has any idea like how much he would need in order to make. Because if it's processed. I assume that like it's only part of the ingredients, so theoretically he may not need that even that much. He just needs it to be present. So, killing a basilisk and getting its stomach basically, or st at least stomach fluid, would be uh, would be the safest method of doing so. What do you guys think? Hmm. Okay, let's go to an alchemy an alchemist then. Obviously, I know where a decent one is. Yeah. Mm, you know where the alchemist is, yes. Okay, so we go to an alchemist. Uh, you enter the alchemist shop. It's filled with all types of plants, potions, etc. Um, it's a long shop, but it's narrow. I see. Like kind of like a greenhouse. Mm, sort of. Sort of. Okay. I walk up to someone who looks like they work there. <laughs> Preferably mm -hmm. the alchemist. Someone is working on the potions in the back. Do you have a moment? Hello? Yes? I, I was wondering if you were aware about uh, making a anti-petrification potion using a basilisk stomach acid. Yes, I know that it's done, and I've done it a couple of times. Uh, do you know how much, uh, based on your prior experience, how much stomach acid, let's say, from a single basilisk, would, how many different uh, potions that could make? 10 to 20, depending on the size of the basilisk, uh, how much stomach acid there is. Okay. Um, hmm. Would would you, in your knowledge, are you reasonably knowledgeable of this creature? 
Mm, relatively, yes. Do you think there's any possibility of capturing one and keeping it alive for c constant uh, farming? You'd have to move a fairly heavy creature from one place to another while it's trying to kill you. And then lock it up while it's trying to kill you. And every time you are going to try and, well, let's keep the term milk it, <laughs> you'll have to milk a creature that's trying to kill you. Very impressive. Snakes are easier. I mean, you can keep a snake relatively easy, but a basilisk. That's yeah, crazy least, talk. Um, you need at least four men to permanently guard it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for this information, and you uh, may be seeing us again. I'll be f uh, looking forward to it. Uh, we leave, and I, uh, I guess we'll just go back to uh, my auntie's house. Mm hmm. You left for like half an hour. Yeah. Uh, for that speak, and like one hour. For the uh, searching of the books and like reading through them to find what you need. Okay. I and come back to the would... house and I say, good, it hasn't blown up yet. <laughs> There's a little bit of smoke coming from the... Uh... <laughs> no, um, <laughs> she, she doesn't... Or um, By the time you come back, nothing actually happened at all. Hmm. There's still the occasional small explosion. Okay, I, uh, I, I, I make sure to, to reiterate what we've, uh, what we've researched and found out to uh, Tyrannius and ask for his opinion. Yeah, I think uh, you guys are probably right with the basilisk. Not throwing out the possibility that it's a Medusa, but most likely it's a basilisk, which would make our job a little easier, because I imagine that Medusa are in... Gorgon are more powerful. Mm. And since these are Makes on sense. since these are on both sides of the river, I mean obviously it, it does this by looking at someone, so theoretically it works at a range, but we may be dealing with more than one on opposite sides of the river. So that's something we need to uh, consider as well. Of course it may not actually be what we think it is. That's true. But out of all of them, they'd still pretty much need to get on both sides of the river. And from what I understand, that's not an easy task. Possible, but not an easy task. Without there being more than one. So we could be dealing with multiple Medusa, multiple Gorgon, which would be kind of terrifying. Or Freak Chance, one of each. Anyway. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just, we'll just, uh, just wait here for however long until we find out what the heck this thing is. find this thing. The thing I gave my auntie. Okay. Um, you stay there for like two days and your auntie comes up to get something to eat and drink but she doesn't want to tell you anything or whatever or when, when you Can I roll an insight to... check to see how, how her mood is on what she's doing? Or can I tell? Uh, you can roll an inside check. Do I have advantage because I've known her for my entire life? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. You probably wouldn't have seen her like this ever. Okay. Like, I mean, that's... Completely opposite I mean, work. You know? Like, honestly, I think it's kind of weird that I can, like, roll inside on someone I just met and roll against someone that I've known for a stupidly long time and I have the same odds. So it just seems a little weird to me. No, there's but... a difference. You don't get advantage, but you're, um... The thing you need to roll changes. Okay, the DC. Okay, yeah. fair enough. So, my uh, insight is 3. 21. That would get you something from most people. Uh, she seems irritated. From lack of sleep, or from what she's finding? Can I tell? Probably... F uh, pr you. It, it could be lack of sleep. But it could also be that she doesn't get the answers that she wants to get. So she's not figuring it out, or it's not yeah, what she it's, thought it's, originally. Yeah, or it's not working, or she can't find a way to uh, prove or disprove what she thought. Mm -hmm. Something like that. 
Okay. Um, this takes, yeah, so many days, and are you staying there for the entire time? If she'll let us crash there, it's a free place. I mean, I might go buy food to be reasonable, if... but otherwise, uh, there's not much else for us to do. I mean, I guess we could. If she doesn't look, she's having any luck. Like, we could. How far north about? Like how? Like a day or more for for the statues? Uh, one and a half day to two days travel. That's a bit much. Well, I'd say we've been here two days already. Yeah. Give her one more day, and next time she comes up, we ask her if she's made any progress and any idea how long it will take. We could also, while this is happening, continue to see if we can hear anything more from in the town about these statues. Yeah, I think we do that. We don't just like lay around and do nothing. Okay, so uh, you just go around talking to people about the statue thingy mm -hmm. while waiting for her to have like a eureka moment, so to say. Okay. Um, people don't necessarily have more information. Um, there are just more confirmation of what you already know. So some have seen bodies with like limbs missing. Yeah, and some have seen statues. completely. Uh, completely uh, solid statues. Are, are they? Are is it the same on regardless on the side of the river? Yes. Okay. Both sides of the river, same story. Um, they do, however, see. Um, they have heard strange noises uh, in the area while <coughs> traveling. Like what? Um. Like what? I have the sound in my head, but I don't know how I would do it. Um, yeah, the the closest uh, they they are very deep guttural sounds, and they. They are kind of uh, like would the same pitch the entire time. Would it sound like... anything like a bull? No. Okay, so I, that pretty much almost narrows it down further to being a basilisk then, because uh, bull, bull, the Gorgons are still magical bulls, so they should have some kind of sound like a bull. Medusa are humanoid. In fact, they probably speak normally, so it seems weird that they have that kind of sound. So I'm just throwing it out there that it's probably a basilisk. Um, it's the 13th of April, and she still hasn't come down. We or might as well just head north and, and, north and, and uh, give her a few more days. Okay. Um, I'm going to make sure that the place has food, and I can go buy some more if, if uh, it needs it. All Does right. it? Does buy... it need food? Okay, you just buy food, etc. for the house. Yeah, how much? Uh, Unless she covers it, how much? I'm paying for it. Just do five gold. Ooh, for geez. like a decent amount of time of food. Yeah. For the okay. six of you now. Uh, by the 16th? Well, if, 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 if that happens by the 13th, we would have probably gone up north and tried to find this out while... <laughs> doing this. I would have Rita stay put, stay there, though. Okay. Then uh, we'll use you as... Um, is everybody going north? Or do you want to wait? No, I think going north is the way to go. Yeah, if nothing's happened by then, I think we should head north. What do you guys think? Yeah. Go look, check out what's going on. I, I, I'd assume that I know that I could put the stomach acid in the flasks, yeah? You don't necessarily know. You don't know how strong the stomach acid is, or if it may or may not corrode or. I'm gonna go back and ask the alchemist. <laughs> you go back to the <laughs> alchemist, and he's like, "That was That's fast. an awful good question." Mm -hmm. <laughs> he doesn't know um, the answer, even though he's handled it before. He's like, "Well, it may or may not." I think you'll be safer off if you 
enchant the flasks a little bit. Okay. Or get like thicker flasks with like more um, material to the side so that if it corrodes, it won't corrode fully through it. Um, do you know who I could go to to get these enchanted? He's like, but I wouldn't even put it in a fluff, to be honest. Okay, the best well, we way to it keep in. it inside is inside the stomach of the basilisk. Do you think... Stomach strike me as being something that would be very, um, how you say, uh, poppable? Um, are basilisk stomachs tough? They can hold their own acid. So they're probably oh, so can human stomachs. That's not saying much. Yeah, human stomachs. They can do that because the inside's full of mucus, um, like a slimy membrane. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're very tough. But Bas are you saying that basilisk stomachs are fairly tough? Um, he's like, all I know is that the basilisk stomach holds its own acid, and it doesn't destroy the basilisk. So, it seems logical to me that the stomach at least has something to stop it. So, yeah, depending. I think if you kill it and move here within a day or two, you should be fine. But with I'm the not sure. stomach? Or with the entire body? We could always buy a horse and a cart and do that. How much do they weigh normally? No clue. We would, have, say anyway. would we have known by the from the reading? No, I'm actually telling you, I have no clue. Ah. Judging from the picture and the medium size, I think these guys are pretty heavy. Probably weigh about 500. Yeah. They're kind of impractical. Okay. Um. I don't. Do we have the appropriate instruments? Are, is there such a thing as like instruments for skinning? Like skinning equipment, you know, like so, like for 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 uh, fielding. I think is is that the term? Uh, by the way, my five hundred wasn't in pounds. Oh, it, it was in kilos. Oh, oh, I thought you meant tons. Five hundred tons? No, not, no, not not yet. Um, it's like one ton in kilos. So, okay. Well, yeah, twelve hundred pounds, which is sixty percent of a ton. Um, yeah, well, uh, are there, are there, like, the, like, specific tools for treating an, uh, a dead animal? Right? I don't think there's anything in the player handbook, but it makes sense. You could mm. use leather, leather workers' tools, maybe? Yeah, that's... I have smithing tools. Logical. I mean, theoretically, You can get them open. Yeah. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. Okay. Um, I guess then we again, could... Again, you have, you have daggers and swords, I mean... Yeah, we could use those. Um, if a dagger or a sword is not going to open it, then nothing is. Okay, uh, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, would Do you think... We need some way to tie it off. I guess just a rope on each side and keeping the sides like up together and just putting it in like, a backpack. And getting here quick as we can without jostling it around too much would probably be the best bet. I I turn and ask the alchemist. Does that be does that make sense? Yeah. Guess. Okay. And if we if we did do this, would you charge for the making of the uh, potion or the potions or oil or whatever they are? Yes. How much would that That's... be? Since we are we are supplying the ingredient. Yes, applying the ingredient does, of course, help. Um, let's see if we can actually find it. That would be useful. Do they even have it for petrification? Like, anti-petrification? I'd imagine it'd be more like a, a common, uncommon item. Because it's not difficult to make, just the ingredients are rare. I see, I see if uh, I'm looking through the magical items, see if we can actually find the poison. Poichi that potions. If it says um, an area, because I did find a potion of healing, which is useful in itself. And if not, I think a potion of greater healing or something along those lines is 
kind of similar. It, it just says that, yeah, it depends on the... An elixir of health... Because the real question is, like, what are the quality of the people that have gone missing? <laughs> Can they pay for this? I mean, I, I'm all for saving people, but I'm not a charity. <laughs> Um, it would be fairly expensive for, like, the normal person. Yeah, I know. And I think it would even be fairly expensive for you guys. Well, at the very least, we can take these things out so the current bodies don't get eaten, eaten and tell, bring proof of kill to the local area and get, get some kind of thing going. Potion of poison. Nice. Yeah, it'll probably be more like a greater healing potion. How much do those run? Which is uh, like an uncommon type of potion. Jeez, so they could be anywhere from like 100 to 500 gold, yeah? Yeah. I will add that like... We are bringing the, the, the rare thing. Which makes it that expensive, so... If we get enough and... There's enough people around. We're the making of the making of the potion itself will take some. So you'll probably like, you can probably cut like fifty golds of it. But you're still talking about like fifty to a hundred more gold per potion, and it's per one, potion. And it's one use per potion or whatever. Actually, how would it even work? Because they're petrified. You pour it over them. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I, I think perhaps the best thing to do is to get rid of this thing. Like, bring proof, let let the authorities know about it, maybe get a little pay on the side. Uh, bring this to the uh, alchemists so that they can undo people. Otherwise, we're not going to get uh, too much out of it. And I think it's impractical to think these people will be able to pay for it normally. So, What do you guys think? The the guy is suddenly asking, but uh, why is there an interest in basilisk uh, related things? Well, uh, we have reason to believe that there is one to the north of the city. Oh, do you think that's what's wreaking havoc? Do you think now something else? No, it actually seems pretty logical now that you say so. Anyway, there's a reward. Oh, there is. How much? Yeah. Do you know? Uh, I'm not necessarily sure, depending on what creature you actually fight. They have like... 50 gold for cockatrees or something? No, wait, that's way less. Like 25 gold for per cockatrees? Um, they had other creatures in between there. If you could actually kill a Medusa, that would lend you 2k. Wow. Well, if this is a Medusa, I don't think we should fight it. I don't think my friends and I are quite ready for that. The 2k. Uh, Gorgons would give you... Uh, slightly less, I think 1500. Basilisks are around seven to 1000. Hmm. Does it mention about how what exactly is proof of kill? Because it'd be impractical to bring the entire body. I'd assume that the stomach, for example, to you, uh, if we did that, would you uh, testify, I guess, that in fact this is a basilisk stomach and that it was freshly killed? Yeah, but I think you should get her, like something... Um, Here's you a... know, they, they have spikes along their back which are quite um, unique. I see. Uh, you can, you might get their eyes, which are also quite unique. I imagine and the eyes actually sell well, yes, because I understand that's how their petrification works. Um, it's more of a um, medium, so to say. So the eyes At themselves have no magical properties. People. Well, if they're out of the uh, eye socket stage, stop working. They're still uh, interesting for poisons. Um, okay. I see. 
so yeah, I guess just tie it up, tie up the stomach with my rope. Da -da -da. I guess we're ready to go and try to find this thing. All right. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. Hopefully, you'll see us all back here in one piece, and not like petrified. Uh, petrified. Yeah. <laughs> one solid piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess we turn and leave, and I want to talk to everyone real quick. So, Wrath, um, real quick, if we, in a surprise round, is it fair to say that we can take the first round simultaneously? Defined simultaneously. So, instead of it being turn-based, I want to know, like, can we take our turns together so that we all simultaneously do the same thing with our characters? Like, we all move, and then after the surprise round, we take normal initiative like that? If you have a surprise round, you get one free round. So, if you say everything happens at the same time, which would be the round. on what it is, of course, it's still one round. So it right. doesn't necessarily change anything. Well, it, it could, because here's the deal. Um, I, can knock him, I can try to knock him prone. If I succeed, everyone gets advantage on, uh, on the attack when it's within five feet. However, if I'm last in the initiative order, I won't be able to do that. So, and then I also would like to, it, it'd be impossible for us to, like, go and, like, get advantage. So, like, if I, I move up first and I want to attack him, I wouldn't get advantage from, like, flanking, for example. Because what I want to do is, if we can't see this, we can't look at this thing, it's going to be harder to hit. But it'll be easier if it's prone and we have allies flanking it. So, in non-game turns, we have two advantage, one disadvantage. So, we'd have advantage on the attack. Um, so, like, I want to know if it's possible for us to take the surprise round kind of, like, together. Organi we'll organize, and after that we roll normal. We have normal initiative. If one of you rolls an initiative of one, I would say no. But as long as the initiative isn't too far away from each other... Then I'd it's, say yes. Because it's like, I it's, mean, it's planned. One person rolling a 2 and the other person rolling an 18, it's more like reaction timing. Right, but that's the whole thing though, it's not really a reaction if we decide when we attack because of surprise. If you roll a 1, I'd still roll no. Roll a 1? Just be Or low. Yeah. yeah. A I, 1. I, a 1, yeah. Okay, that sounds fair. Because, okay. Because, like, it makes sense, it's like we plan the first attack and then the f battle starts when we get in the flow of the battle. That's kind yeah. of what I'm thinking. Um. So, yeah. So that's kind of what I want to do is, uh... And if you roll a one, you're like, that guy, like, Oh, I thought we were supposed to go at three and not at go. Right, exactly. Like, something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, not if, when. Here's another question. Okay. I happen to know that a certain uh, spellcaster in our group has the spell sleep. And as, as we have all have fey ancestry, we are immune to sleep. So, does that mean that the spell ignores us? Or are still you immune, or are you... We are uh, immune. Resistant. Straight up immune to, to magical sleep. Mm -hmm. We are resistant to charming, but straight up immune to magical sleep. So my question is, does that spell ignore us, or can it still affect us, we just don't fall asleep? The latter. Okay. It, it doesn't ignore you, the magic still happens. Okay. But because you can stay awake. The way the sleep works is that he rolls, and whoever has the lowest hit points gets subtracted from that. If you lose basically all of your hit points to the subtraction of the sleep total, then you fall asleep. So I'm wondering if a good idea would be for the three, the three meleeers to go attack this thing and flank this thing, hit it, then immediately cast sleep on it. But it'd have to have less than everyone else for it to be affected. If it doesn't, then it's very, very unlikely that we'll knock it asleep. So maybe it's a good idea to go ahead and make an attack with an attack from the uh, shadows. With uh, for you, what do you think? Do you think you, you, we should risk the spell, or do you think you should just do a ranged attack? You if must. we're sneaking and we come up on somebody, is that what you're saying? Well, if we if we can get this thing, like prepare a trap for this thing. So that means the first attack, we have to do enough damage to take the hit points down to where it's less than ours? Less than the lowest person here, because if that happens, then it would be a... Uh, so who... who? I mean, like, it's it's obviously we can't say... The lowest health person would be 
Tyrannius of the three of us because Yuma would not be in the in the actual area of effect. Or she could even position it to where, like, for example, I'm in the area of effect as I have the most hit points. So as long as reach has less than me, it would be okay. But if it, it just whoever has the lowest hit points in the in the area that the spell hits is affected first, and it subtracts it from the total sleep. And so long as the the amount of sleep is more than the health points, they fall asleep. Yeah, well, that that's a good idea. But we don't know what the hit points are of the creatures we're gonna fight, right? Yeah, and if it's prone, she'll have this advantage on the uh, on the ranged attack. Even though it's a sneak attack, so it would actually re end up being normal. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. The best thing to do would be an initial shot from a, with Yuma's crossbow. Three of us rush out. I knock it prone, or at least attempt to. We can't. We don't look at this thing in the eye. While I do that while you guys flank it. Then we all attack together. And that would give us the best chance of hitting and doing like lots and lots of damage. So just make sure you don't look this thing in the eye. We can't really run and not look at it in the eye, right? But I'm willing to give it a try. We can. I mean, you just don't look at it. It's like a sharing gun. <laughs> it'll be difficult. Yeah, it'll be the idea. It's like, once again, it's in, in game terms, we don't look at it, which means we technically don't know exactly where it is, so we attack with disadvantage. But that's kind of the idea. So we, we, we just can't look at it. From what I understand, it's because the eyes are a catalyst. We can look at it. So long as it doesn't like look at us and see us, it can't do anything. But once the bad... try and trap it. How so? Dig a pit. Dig a pit. Mm. Cover up the pit. And try and get it to entice it towards the pit. That would be the safest way. Perhaps. I don't know. Yeah, well, the question is how deep, deep would the pit be, and we don't have any digging equipment. And it would, would it be practical is the big question. I mean, we could buy a couple of shovels, I guess, but we'd have to go in an area that it frequents, which most likely would be a place that it's used to going, so I think it'd be able to detect a issue. Just a thought. Yeah. Do you, think a trap, do you guys think a trap is viable? Because the thing is, if we get it trapped in there, how are we going to take it out, though? Mm -hmm. We still have to look at it to see it, to hit By it. By the way, before I forget, Toby, you weren't here while we set this, but uh, you gained 25 experience for the bee thingy. For the witch? The bee. No, for the bee. For the bees. Yeah, yeah no, I got that. He got Already. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I, I honestly, because like we still, sorry. we still have to hit it. I mean, theoretically, it just make it harder for it to hit us. But oh, well, I mean, you could pour a flammable liquid in. I mean, there are lots of different ideas. Once it's trapped, it's not going anywhere. This is true, but and we well, don't have to. Look we don't at know it. that it has eight legs. I mean, it strikes me as a creature that's probably very used to being in that kind of situation. It'd have to be a basically a vertical, vertical and deep pit, and that would take like a full day to dig in an area that it should frequent. I think it's very impractical. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. So I think we should just keep it simple and just like attack it, but not look it directly in the eye and go for it. And if one of us turns to stone, then well, crap. <laughs> there's a there's like a. Oh, again, we still need. We're not even exactly sure what this is, right? Right, but we're like, I'm like ninety percent sure it's a basilisk. And that's a that's a perma freeze, right? Yes, the only non perma freeze is the copy trees, uh, unless you get magic. So there is a like a clergy in this town, yeah, where clerics are. There's a church. Well, you know, worst comes to worst. Hopefully kill the bloody thing, take its stomach, buy the potion, deduct it from wherever it got, petrified, and we'll call it a day. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll get a cleric and hopefully they'll be able to reverse it. I think we can take this thing, though. If it's a... Uh, 
if it's a basilisk. If it's not a basilisk, if it's a gorgon, I don't know if we want to take on take it on. We may want to deal with. I, I think a gorgon or a medusa. We probably should just let people know that's what it is, and maybe see if we can't like a massive some uh, response. But I don't think just the four of us will be able to take those two on. At least not yet. I don't know. I don't know how strong the Medusa is, but I want to say it's almost at like a well, sales worth two thousand gold. So it's probably a CR of eight, maybe less, a little less than that. I don't know. I don't know how the money thing works. Um. So yeah, if we're good with that, I guess we can just go ahead and do that. Yeah, just go ahead and try. Um, if it's Sounds a basilisk, we'll, we'll take it on. If it's not a basilisk, then we try not to engage. Okay, I guess we're going to head north up the river. Okay. And Rita is staying behind. Rita is staying behind, and, and we'll let my auntie know if she asks, and that I left her here, and I got food for basically the rest of the time, and for her, so. Yeah, Rita would know to say that. Seems logical. <laughs> 